hungry. I know, I know. Ridiculous. Thanks, George. Kate, how are you? Wondering about you? How are things, Susie? Things, Kate, are in a shambles. It's finished. Kaput. Oh? W when did you decide that? Last night. Oh, Katie, you know how hard I've tried? How much I wanted to make it work. But there's nothing left. Nothing. And Ben agrees? No. But when something's dead, the only decent thing to do is bury it. I uh, called my attorney earlier today and made an appointment for tomorrow. I'm going to start proceedings immediately. My, you are in a rush. Why wait? Well, yeah, I suppose. If you're that sure. I am. I was uh, half expecting a call from you. Big sister's intuition. Well, I hardly needed a crystal ball, did I? Hey, look, Susie, why don't you come up here? We can talk or not, whatever you want. Oh, Kitty, I'd love to, but it's too complicated. <laughs> There's the cat, the dog, the bird, a million things. Can't Ben take care of the animals for a few days? Ben's gone. He left this morning for L.A. on business. And I want to be out when he gets back. What about the house? It's his. And he can have everything in it. I want nothing from him. And he'll get no more from me. Clean, finished, as if there never was a marriage. That's what I'm going to tell the lawyer. Hey, look, Susie, why don't I drive down there and keep you company? No, I'm all right, really. It's been raining here, and they're predicting a big storm. I don't want you driving down in that. When did a little weather ever stop me? Look, it's not even 3 o'clock. And it's lonely around here with Philip away. I can be down there in plenty of time for us to have a drink and a nice cozy dinner together. No, I don't think so. I'll probably have myself a good cry tonight. No, 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 I'll be fine in the morning. I'll call you tomorrow, okay? Okay, love. You, you will call if you change your mind. Yes, I will. And Katie... Thanks for being there. Bye-bye. Have you finished, Eve? What are you doing here?
Operator. Hello, uh, Operator. I've been trying to reach area code 408, 555-4208, and I keep getting a busy signal. Has there been any trouble with the telephone lines down there because of the storm? We haven't been notified of any. Oh, well, fine, then. Could you check the line for conversation, please? Is this an emergency call? Uh, yes, this is an emergency. I'll have it checked for you. I'm sorry, the phone's off the hook. Off the hook? There's no conversation on the line. Oh, oh yes, well, thank you, operator. George, I've decided to drive down and spend the night with Susan. Could you get the car out for me? Yes, ma'am, right away. Thanks. I'll just throw some things in the suitcase. Oh, we have to throw those in the front seat. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Have a nice trip, Mrs. Wayback. <laughs> down the fort, George. I'll do my best. What can I do for you? Fill it up, please. Yes, ma'am. South, miss? Uh, yes. How far? About 25 miles. The road's closed beyond Wilton Corners. We've had some rock slides. Oh, well, I wasn't going quite that far. Just the same, miss. We're recommending the folks stay off Route 1, unless it's urgent. We're going to have to close down all of it as soon as it's dark. Well, uh, I'll make a phone call. Maybe I'll stay at the lodge for the night. That'd be best. Thank you. Come again, miss.
the Wainwright residence. Oh, hi, George. It's me. Has Susan called? No, ma'am. Is there something wrong? Well, uh, I'm at Highland Point. I called her again, but there was no answer. I thought maybe she'd changed her mind about coming up to the city. Perhaps she's on her way, Mrs. Wainwright. Well, I doubt that she'd come without calling. Look, uh, I'm going to go on down to Susan's. If, if she does arrive, have her call me, will you? Of course, Mrs. Wainwright. Okay. Bye-bye. Callie? You hungry? Oh, you couldn't possibly be. You've already been fed.
you where Mrs. Chapel is. I don't keep tabs on your sister. She's always gallivanting somewhere. She's not home? No. What time did she leave? Search me. She was gone from the house when I got here. That's all I know. What time was that? My regular time, three o'clock. But I, I talked to her on the phone just a few minutes before three. Well, I can't help that. I was here at my regular hour, just like always. But that's not possible. You would have seen her leaving on the way from your house, wouldn't you? Are you calling me a liar, Mrs. Wainwright? Well, uh, no, of course not, Mrs. Hawks. I, I was only trying to be logical. There's no way from here to the highway except past your house, and it must take at least five minutes to walk the road from your house to here. I know what time I got here. I can't say what time you spoke to your sister. So I don't know if I should have seen her going to the highway. Or not, do it. Mrs. Hawks, I, I tried to call here twice between three and four, and the phone was off the hook. Then someone put it back on, and when I called again, there was no answer. And you insist you were here all that time? Mrs. Wainwright, some people have work to do. I am trying to do mine. Now, I don't know nothing about no phone. I came in here at three o'clock, and I went straight upstairs. Today is my upstairs day. Hmm. And you probably didn't hear the phone ringing because your hearing aid was turned off. Well, there wouldn't be nobody calling me here. What about girl? Have you seen her? Have you seen the dog, Mrs. Hawks? There's no need to shout. No, I didn't. Not hiding her hair. She probably took it with her when she left. calling, please. This is Edith Jordan. Oh, Edith, hi. How are you? This is Catherine Wainwright. Catherine Wayne. Oh, Catherine, hi. When did you get down here? Oh, an hour or so ago. Oh, uh, well, will Susan be back soon? I imagine she will. She wasn't here when I arrived, and since she didn't know I was coming, I really can't be sure. She might have gone somewhere for dinner. Oh, I doubt that, unless she's on her way here. Have you spoken to Susan since last night? Yes, late this afternoon. Then you know what she's decided. Uh-huh. Yes, we had quite a long chat this morning, too. I told her to come over and have dinner and, and sleep over. She said she'd let me know. Uh, th then I, I don't understand. 
Apparently, she's been gone for a couple of hours. Mrs. Hawks has been here since three, and... Mrs. Hawks? What's she doing there? Susan Pink slipped that old battle axe. She finally fired her. She told me so last night. They had words more than usual, I gather. Are you sure? Susan gave her two weeks' pay and a boot in the rear. If it had been me, she could go whistle for her two weeks. Well, then what's she doing here? Well, I always did think that that old witch was a little bit touched. You know how possessive she is about Ben in that house. She obviously won't take go for an answer until she's thrown out bodily. But I wouldn't advise you to try it. I'm sure her bite is poisonous. Well, if she does come to your house, will you uh, have her call me? Of course. I'll have her phone you right away. And if she comes home, let me know, will you? I'm kind of worried about her, the state of mind she's in. Y yes, I, I will, Edith. Bye-bye. Stone cold. Mrs. Hawks, the furnace isn't working. The furnace ain't my business. Do you know how to turn it on? No. Don't you have a furnace at your house? Not one of them newfangled oil burner things. If you're cold, sit by the fire. Down there. Getting the furnace started. Mrs. Hawks, uh, don't you have any idea where Mrs. Chapel might have been all this time? She could have gone to see her lawyer, I suppose, about the divorce. How would you know about the divorce? It was just decided last night. It's been coming for a long time. Anybody with eyes could see that. Do you realize that Mr. Chapel is likely to lose this house if she goes through with the divorce now? That's hardly your affair. Oh, ain't it? This house has been my affair for the past ten years. Every day, from breakfast till the dinner dishes was washed and put away. This house and Mr. Chapel, mine, until she came along. That's enough, Mrs. Hawks. Now, you needn't bother about dinner. And if you're finished with your other work, you can go. I'm sure that Mrs. Chapel will be home soon and we'll fix something for ourselves. Number one, I ain't finished with my other work. Number two, this is Wednesday. On Wednesday, Mr. Chapel always has my New England boiled dinner. Mr. Chapel won't be home for dinner. He's in Los Angeles. That's so. Nobody told me. You can take my word for it. And neither Mrs. Chapel nor I like boiled food. In this house, I take my orders from Mr. Chapel. Uh, Mrs. Hawks, you leave me no choice. I happen to know that Mrs. Chapel fired you, so if you'd be kind enough to leave. 
I've been working for Mr. Chapel for a long time. He hired me. He's the only one who can fire me. Did you hear what I said? I want you to go. Now. Mrs. Chapel, her car's in the garage. Didn't she come in this way? Mrs. Hawks?
Is uh, Mr. Chappell's secretary there? I don't know her name. Well, Joyce is gone for the day. Oh. Uh, well, p perhaps you could tell me. Where does Mr. Chappell stay when he goes to Los Angeles for the company? Well, he always stayed at the White Hall. The, the White Hall. Thank you. But, ma'am. Yes? Mr. Chappell hasn't been with Sloan and Simpson for some time. What? Uh, are you sure? Oh, yes. He left the firm over a month ago. I see. Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much. Funny. Susan never mentioned that. Oh. Oh, well, Callie, all right, if you're still hungry. I don't need. Good night. down there. Come on. Come on, let's go in by the fire. Come on. Come on, girl. Just lie down by the fire and get dry. Mr. Benjamin Chapel registered there? Just a moment, please. No, we don't. Well, do you have a reservation for him? And he hasn't canceled his reservation? No. 
Well, then I'd like to leave a message for him, please. Uh, would you have him call home as soon as he arrives? Yes, that's right. Thank you. Come on, girl. No, she hasn't. Gee, that is strange. Well, her, her car's in the garage. I, I thought she'd come home when I saw it. But I guess a friend picked her up and the car's been here all the time. Could be, but... Catherine, I think you should call the police and report her as missing. The police? Really? You really think I should? Well, uh, maybe, maybe I will. Yes, that Harry pick you up so you could join us for dinner, but I just heard on the radio that Route 1 is closed by rock slides between there and here. Well, that, that's very thoughtful of you, Edith, but I'm okay. I'm probably being foolish. I've been jumping at sounds and I'm imagining all sorts of things. Well, I, I'd hate to be alone in that house on a night like this, especially with all your worry about Susan. Oh, I'd, I'd really be spooked. Well, I, I definitely think you should call the police. Hello? Hello? Edith? Hello? Ms. Wainwright? Yes. Is there something wrong? Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, Mrs. Edith Jordan called headquarters and asked us to look in on you. Make sure you're all right. Oh, yes, I'm fine. C come in, please. Thank you. Your phone's still out of order? Yes, I'm afraid so. I just tried it again. Well, we've reported it, but there are so many lines down from the storm, I'm afraid it'll be quite a while before the phone company gets around to you. 
Mrs. Jordan wanted you to know that she's calling around trying to locate your sister and tell her you're here. Oh, thank you. I, I've been quite concerned. Uh, emergency vehicles can get through on Route 1 to the north. So if you'd like us to take you by Mrs. Jordan's home, she thought you might want to spend the night with her. Well, that's very kind of you, but uh, Mrs. Chapel might be coming in any time now, and I, I'd rather be here. Well, you could leave her a note. No, no, I'll stay here. But w would it be possible, if Mrs. Chapel is stranded somewhere, for you to uh, let me know? Yes, ma'am. We'll keep in touch with Mrs. Jordan. If she hears anything, we'll get back to you. Thank you. Now, is there anything else we can do for you? Oh, yes. Uh, part of a tree broke through the window upstairs, and it's too heavy for me to move. The room's getting soaked. Well, I think we can fix that, but uh, we'll need something to block it off with. Oh, I think we can find something in the basement. Must be something down here you can use. Wait a minute. I think this will work. How big is that window, ma'am? Think that'll cover it? Oh, yes, that should be fine. Yeah, take okay. that, Okay. Listen, we'll need something to hold this in place. We'll take a couple of these two bucks. patrol car stationed at the slide about two miles north on Route 1. So if you change your mind or you need any help... Yes, all right, and thank you again. Oh, girl, for heaven's sake. Thank you. 
the police going out past my house and I was wondering, well, is something wrong here? What do they want? No, they, they just brought me a message from Mrs. Jordan. What happened to your lights? I don't know. The storm, I suppose. Oh, that ain't likely. We're on the same line and my lights is okay. Maybe it's a fuse. I better take a look. Candles. There's a flashlight here somewhere. Here it is. And here's the fuses. I, I thought it might be a fuse, but I don't know where the fuse box is. Oh, it's in the basement. You better come with me. Why? Well, my eyes ain't so good. Sometimes it's hard to know which ones is blown. Wainwright, you got to understand about Mr. Chapel. He's pretty much in debt and a divorce right now. It could finish him. Mrs. Hawks, I really don't care to discuss Mr. Chapel's problem with you. He'd lose this house everything. I understand how you feel about Mr. Chapel, but this is between Mr. Chapel and Mrs. Chapel. You think he married her for money, don't oh, you? Mrs. Hawks, please. this? The ha handle is... It's on off. You. All the time. What? I knew there was someone in this house. You never went home, did you? What are you talking about? You turned off the lights to frighten me. Why? Do you really hate my sister that much? 
You're talking crazy. Down here in the basement, making noises to frighten me. You're trying to drive me out of this house. Now, what would I go skulking around here for? I don't know, but I heard you. I heard you. Did you tell that to the police? Yes, I did. You're lying. <laughs> they didn't do any searching. I was outside watching. You told them they didn't believe you. It was you all the time. Get out of this house. Get out. Get out! Susan! Susan! Oh, Ben. Catherine. Well, hello. I certainly didn't expect to see you here, but I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, should I? Under the circumstances, obviously, Susan told you. Susan isn't here. She's not? Well, where is she? I don't know. Ben, I'm worried. I've been here for hours. I I've even been outside looking for her. Well, maybe she drove up to see you. Her car's in the garage. Well, that's odd. Well, probably a friend came to pick her up. She may have felt the need to talk. I suppose you know about us. Yes, yeah, she told me on the phone. That's why I decided to come down. But when I got here, she wasn't here. She told me you were going to Los Angeles on business. Well, I was on my way. After our blow-up last night, I thought it would be a good idea if we both had some time to cool off. But on my way to the airport, I started to have second thoughts. I was halfway up the steps of the plane when I just turned around and came back down again. I sat in the airport and I thought over all the things that we had said to each other and... The more I thought about it, the worse. Well, anyway, that plane took off without me, and then the next one, and finally I decided that I would come on back and try my damnedest to find some way to patch things up. Certainly more important than any business trip. I'll find her. The phone's out of order. He's dead all right. Well, I'm going to go up and change out of these wet things. Maybe the phone will be fixed by then. Ben, did you know that Susan fired Mrs. Hawks? Yes. It was pretty rough on the old girl. I mean, after being here all these years, but I don't blame Susan. Mrs. Hawks looked on her as a usurper ever since we got married. Well, she was here today, cleaning and cooking as usual. She was? Not only that, she's been trying to frighten me into leaving. <sighs> now, Catherine, I find that hard to believe. But it's true. She's had me climbing the walls. I, I think she resents me even more than she does Susan. You really think so? Well, the fact is, I'm not too sure that Mrs. Hawks is quite all there. Ben, you don't suppose Mrs. Hawks could have done something to Susan, do you? What? Well, I suppose it is possible. No. I mean, what am I saying? The idea is ridiculous. Catherine, nobody has done anything to Susan. You, you're so jumpy. It's beginning to affect me. Ben. How did you...
you get here? What? What do you mean? The highway. It's closed. Oh, yeah. Of course. Well, I had to take the back road, the one that cuts in just north of Wilton Corners. It's mostly a dirt road. Well, mud now. And uh, it's washed out a couple of miles from me. I had to walk from there. Well, that's why I'm such a mess. Catherine, relax. We're worrying about nothing. Susan's spending the night with a friend. I'm sure of it. You'll see. What, what, what about the people you were supposed to meet in Los Angeles? Your business appointment. Won't they be wondering where you are? I called my office from the airport and told my secretary to phone down and cancel. Your secretary at Sloan and Simpson? Well, of course. What else? What's with you, Kate? Uh, n nothing. I, 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 I just wondered. You really are shook up. Well, I feel a lot better. Have you tried the phone again? No. Still nothing. Ben, does Susan know about your job? Know what? I called Sloan and Simpson earlier today to find out where I could reach you in Los Angeles. I see. And what you found out is that I'd been sacked. No, Susan doesn't know. Oh, I see. That's what all those questions were all about. Were you really going to Los Angeles? Yes. To see my contacts, ex-customers and all that. I've been beating the bushes these last month trying to locate a new situation. Hopefully before I had to tell Susan I'd blown the old one. I guess you've been under a lot of pressure lately. Pressure? You mean money? Yes. Is, uh, is that part of the trouble between you and Susan? Not directly. Would you like a drink, Catherine? No, thank you. Well, I think I'm going to have another one. I still haven't gotten a chill out of my bones. What do you mean? Not directly. Oh. It bugs me. I mean, not being able to give Susan the things I'd like to. I've got my share of male ego, and it bothers me whenever she uses her own money to buy clothing and things. No reason why she shouldn't? I suppose not. But uh, it triggered more than one argument, for which I take full responsibility. But you know, I've always wanted to make a go of it on what I earn. I would have thought that the extra 15,000 that Susan drew from her trust fund last month would have eased things for you a bit. So she told you about that? No, my attorney did. I see. Well, some of my creditors were getting a bit nasty. Speaking of lawyers, did you know that Susan's planning to see her lawyer tomorrow about the divorce? Well, I suppose I'm not all that surprised. A divorce now would put you in a bind, wouldn't it? I guess. I haven't thought that much about it because it's not going to happen. The truth is, our difficulties are just a bunch of molehills, piled one on top of another until they look like an insurmountable mountain. We'll work it out. You'll see. Those molehills. Money and other women. Look, Catherine, 
I know that Susan was just a little suspicious about some of my business trips, but I gave up those one-night stands long before we were married. Ben, I found Susan's keys and her wallet upstairs. I can't imagine why she would have gone out without them. Well, she has another set of keys. And why would she need her wallet if she's having dinner at a friend's house? Y yes, I, I suppose. But I, I can't get it out of my head that maybe this afternoon she went outside for something and, and uh, in the storm had an accident. Uh, she could be lying out there somewhere. Your imagination's working overtime. Okay. It'll make you feel better. I'll go out and look. Thanks, Ben. Looks like the rain's let up. What are you doing? What's got into you, Catherine? Where do you think you're going? Suddenly, I just couldn't sit there any longer. Ben, I'm frightened. Of what? Something terrible has happened to Susan. I know it. I'm sure of it, Ben. If I could just get to the police and tell them. Catherine, you're not making any sense. I mean, we're stuck here until morning. There's no place to go. No! They're, they're police at the roadblock. If we could just tell them... To... Catherine, you're letting your imagination run wild. Come on. We'll go inside, sit down quietly, and I'll give you a nice, stiff drink. One more. All of it this time. I'll be all right in a minute. In a minute. If you drink that all down. Come on. Ben, I'm sorry. It's just that it's been such a nerve-wracking day. I'm all right now. You sure? Yes, but I'm exhausted. Of course. If you don't mind, I think I'll uh, go up and lie down. I feel as if I could sleep for a week. Good idea. Oh, I, I can make it. Well, you get some sleep. I'll wake you when Susan gets home. Catherine. The phone company's probably repairing the lines right now. I'm sure we'll have service any minute now. Y yes, uh, 
I'm sure. Oh my God! 